Superconductors display some of the strangest behavior I've ever seen. In this video, I'd like to share with you some of these bizarre experiments. While I am far from an expert in superconductivity, I have spent a fair amount of time experimenting with superconductors and reading books about how they behave. In this video, I'll be sharing some of the understanding I've gained along the way. Superconductors are materials that display some pretty wild behaviors when they get exposed to magnetic fields. This black disc you see here has a superconductor embedded in it, and you can clearly see a magnet levitating above the disc. What in the heck is going on? How does this curious behavior arise? In some sense, superconductors are quite ordinary. They're just ceramic materials. The superconductor used in the experiments in this video are made up of a mixed metal oxide. This superconductor is made of the elements yttrium, barium, copper, and oxygen. It's sometimes just called YBCO or YBCO for short. It's only when a superconductor has been cooled below its critical temperature, sometimes called TC, that it displays its bizarre magnetic and electric properties. This YBCO superconductor has a critical temperature of about 90 Kelvin. Liquid nitrogen, which has a temperature of 77 Kelvin, is often used to cool a YBCO superconductor below its critical temperature. Now that we've cooled this superconductor in some liquid nitrogen, we should be able to get a magnet to hover above it. That's pretty neat, isn't it? It's wild how the magnet isn't just locked in place, but can be made to rotate above the superconductor. Let's zoom in for a closer look. Let's watch what happens as the superconductor warms. You can tell the superconductor is warming as frost forms across its surface. Do you see that? The magnet no longer hovers. The superconductor has been warmed above its critical temperature, so it no longer has its superconducting power. We'll need to cool it in liquid nitrogen to get it to work again. The weird interactions between superconductors and magnets happen because superconductors expel magnetic fields. This is known as the Meissner effect. A magnet placed above a superconductor will of course fall due to gravity. As the magnet falls, its magnetic field approaches the superconductor. If the magnet were actually to touch the superconductor, then its magnetic field would penetrate the superconductor. But that can't happen because superconductors repel magnetic fields. Because of this, a magnet placed above a superconductor levitates at the point where gravitational attraction and magnetic repulsion balance. The Meissner effect also allows us to do the opposite. Levitate a superconductor above a magnetic field. A superconductor placed above a magnet falls because of gravity and the superconductor expels the magnetic field from the magnet below. However, the superconductor is unable to fall onto the magnet and touch it because doing so would require the magnetic field to penetrate the superconductor. Thus, the superconductor levitates above the magnet where the gravitational and magnetic forces balance. Now we're going to see what happens when we place a superconductor above this circular track of magnets. Hey, look at that! The superconductors not only levitate above the track, but they also move freely around the track. For an even wilder trick, let's turn the track upside down. That's crazy! The superconductor can even glide around the track when it's upside down. That's almost unbelievable! The superconductor seems to move freely as long as the magnetic field doesn't change. To see what I mean by this, watch what happens when I place a single magnet on the track. Doing so disrupts the uniform magnetic field of the track. Yep, the superconductor stops abruptly when it encounters the single magnet. The change in magnetic field blocks the motion of the superconductor. That's kind of neat. Superconductors seem to resist moving into areas where the magnetic field changes. We can use this fact to lock a superconductor in place within a magnetic field. Like here, you can see this superconductor remains levitating just above some magnets, even if it's turned upside down. To begin understanding how this works, 
we first need to recognize that the superconductors used in this video have impurities embedded within them. The impurities are not superconducting. Superconductors that contain impurities like this are called type 2 superconductors. Magnetic fields can penetrate type 2 superconductors through the impurities, but only at the impurities. When this happens, a type 2 superconductor becomes locked in a particular orientation when placed in a magnetic field. This is called quantum locking. This animation will help to illustrate how quantum locking works. Magnetic field lines can penetrate impurities which are not superconducting. Any movement of the superconductor would cause magnetic field lines to penetrate superconducting material rather than the impurities. Of course, this can't happen, so the disk remains locked in an orientation where the magnetic field lines penetrate the impurities and not the superconducting material. Quantum locking lets you do all sorts of bizarre experiments. Look at this. I can use the superconductor to pick up the magnet, and then I can hold the magnet and pick up the superconductor. And yet the two aren't touching. Look at this. I can rotate the superconductor beneath the magnet. The two are not touching. All these experiments are possible as long as the magnetic field through the superconductor remains a constant. Now if you watch, you can see the condensation form, which means that the superconductor is starting to get warmed above its critical temperature. Yeah, sure enough, it looks like the superconductor has lost its ability to show the curious magnetic behavior. I'm going to have to cool this disk back down so it'll work again. We're now going to delve more deeply into the science of superconductors. What follows is a more technical description of superconductors and quantum locking. Remember, I'm not an expert in this area, so my descriptions might not be entirely correct. I have included references to books in the video description if you'd like to learn more. Electric current flows without resistance through a superconductor. Another way of saying this is that the conductivity of a superconductor is infinite. Let's imagine electric current flowing through a superconducting ring. The electric current density flowing through the ring can be calculated as the current density is the conductivity times the electric field. According to this equation, if the conductivity is infinite, then the current density must also be infinite. But that's not physically possible. So to keep the current density finite, the electric field associated with a superconductor is equal to zero. And in this case, infinity times zero gives a finite value. The electric current flowing around the superconducting ring produces a magnetic field that passes through the ring. Recall that changing magnetic fields produce electric fields. But we got to remember that the electric field in our superconductor has to remain zero. Because of this, the magnetic field moving through the superconducting ring can't change. And if the magnetic field can't change, then the electric current around the ring can't change either. It's got to flow forever without ceasing. That's superconduction. When a type 2 superconductor gets placed near a magnetic field, the field lines from the magnet are forced to penetrate at the impurities in the materials at junctions known as flux tubes. What's cool about each flux tube is that electric current flows in a ring around the flux tube. And what happens is a superconducting ring current gets set up around each flux tube. Because a type 2 superconductor contains millions of impurities, millions of these flux tubes are set up in a type 2 superconductor when it's placed near a magnetic field. The field through each flux tube can't change. Of course, movement of a superconductor closer to or away from a magnet or even changing the way it's tilted relative to the field would change the field passing through the flux tube. This, of course, would change the electric field, and that can't happen. So with millions of flux tubes in a type 2 superconductor, it's no wonder why such materials remain locked in place, even when turned upside down. With all this talk about quantum locking in place, you might be wondering why the superconductor can move when placed on the circular track or above the circular magnet. In these cases, the magnetic field doesn't change at all along the track or above the circular magnet. So as long as the magnetic field doesn't change, the superconductor is free to move. Notice that the superconductor does not slide sideways off the track, but rather continues to move throughout the uniform magnetic field. Well. 
I hope you enjoyed my experiments, and I hope you learned a little bit more about superconductivity and quantum locking. To learn more, be sure to check out the references I've listed in the video description. Also, be sure to leave in the comments any suggestions you have for experiments you'd like to see me try with superconductors. Thanks so much for watching.